So, Lebanon Assembly of God, what are we all about? We're about loving, accepting, and growing. <clears throat> and I'm glad that I've mastered it all and I don't need growing anymore. <laughs> You're laughing a little too loud there, Bridget. <laughs> You're making me worried. Uh, no, but seriously, there are messages that I preach that are maybe sometimes more for me than they are for you. This message is one of those messages that I am asking God to help me grow in. So it's within that light uh, that I share this with you. Today, the title of the message is Rest, Listen and be led. Read, listen, and be led. You know, as a society, we are constantly moving, aren't we? Uh, You're taking, for us, we've got five kids, so right now it's crazy with with our uh, kids now, teenagers. It's kind of funny to see his granddaughter. No? Okay. Anyway, I remember your daughters being young, and I don't think, was I don't even know if my girls were born at that point in time no so now my my girls are driving and they all have jobs in different places uh you know micah has soccer uh i'm trying to do ministry melanie's doing weight watchers and we are going like crazy and maybe your life is similar to that you've got your schedules you're going here you're going there uh, you got to keep track of this and you want to excel at work, and, and so your life becomes very, very busy. We're constantly on the move, but the big question is, are we going anywhere? Right? <laughs> Sometimes we can be so active, going so many places, that really we're not moving, we are not growing the way that God wants us to. With that in mind, let's look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. And this is after God created uh, everything during the first six days, the heavens, the earth, mankind, everything. It says, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He blessed it and made it holy. What does that word holy mean? Anybody know it? Two words, starts with S. Set apart. So he took one day out of the seven and he set it apart. So when you see that word holy, I want you to think, Set apart, and I want you to think special, okay? So then God blessed the seventh day, and he set it apart, and he made it special. Because on it, he rested from all of the work of creating that he had done. Now, I want to share an idea, and I want you to, to kind of think if you think this makes sense, okay? So I'm telling you, God worked really hard creating the, the sun, the moon, and the stars. You know, each one of the animals, uh, mankind. And after he had finished uh, creating mankind, he was beat, dead tired. And so he took the seventh day and he rested. Does that make sense? No. Why? Yes. God does not get tired. Very wise. Good answer. God simply spoke and created everything. Okay? He didn't break a sweat. You know, he breathed the breath into life and mankind. He took dirt and created mankind. So that's probably the most action that was done there. But at the end of the six days, God was not tired out in the least. Okay? So why would God take this day and rest from all the work. Was it about him? No, it was about us. So then God blessed the seventh day, and he set it apart. He made it special, and he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So, Sabbath. This is taken from uh, the word we believe, Sabbat. And this means to stop, to cease, Or to keep. Maybe you didn't think about that last one there. So it's a stopping from our work, ceasing that work, and then to actually keep something. Okay? There's an action involved. In Exodus chapter 20, who who can tell me what happens in Exodus chapter 20? It is the, the Ten Commandments. That's right. So here's one of the Ten Commandments. It says, remember the Sabbath, or 
remember this special day that's been set apart by keeping it holy. So what's the emphasis here? It's part of our job to separate this and keep it holy. Okay, so remember the Sabbath is spoken to the people of Israel. Remember the Sabbath by keeping it set apart, holy, special. Six days you shall do labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath. It's a pause. It's a rest. It's a time where we stop. Now notice the next part because it's very important. What does it say right after Sabbath? To the Lord. Okay, so it's not just a pause. It's not just a stopping of the work. What I want you to picture in your mind, it's a stop, but we are pointed towards God. When we stop and we take that that rest, we are always having in our mind God and what he has done for us. So, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do, uh, not do any work. Now, who is this for? Is it just for us? Or is it just for the people of Israel? Uh, Neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your, what is that next word? This is interesting. Let's keep reading. Nor any foreigner residing in your towns. So God is speaking to the people of Israel, and he's saying, it's not just you, but even your servants, even your animals are to take a break during this time. Even the foreigners that aren't even followers of God, they are to have this period of rest. Why? Verse 11, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested, he paused, he stopped from the work on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Let's stop and talk about this just for a moment. Remember in the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed is the one. You know how you can translate that? Happy is the one who basically does this. So, Keep this in mind that God set apart this day, and this day is not to be a somber day. This day is not to be a chore for us, but it's actually supposed to be a happy occasion. Like when you hear about the Sabbath, you're not supposed to say, oh, you're supposed to say, thank you, God. Therefore, the Lord blessed, he made happy this set apart, this special day, And he made it holy. Let's continue on Exodus chapter 23 and verse 10. We're going to see how far this rest extends for the people of Israel. Verse 10. For six years you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops. But during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Okay, so it's not just... Once a week, but on that seventh year, not just people, not even just animals, but your land. Even your land is supposed to lie unplowed and unused. Now, I think it's amazing today. I think back in that time, they were probably like, man, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem fair. How are we going to survive during the seventh year? But you know what we find out agriculturally? That giving your land a break, what does it do? It makes it more fertile. It makes it able uh, to produce more. So God knew what he was doing in this. So, but during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Now, let's see some of the reasoning behind this. Then the poor among your people may get food from it. And the wild animals may eat what is left. So when you see this verse, what do you hear from it? What do you, where do you see God's concern? God's concern is for people. God's concern is for the poor. God's concern is even for the animals that are there. And we see that built in to Sabbath. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Verse 12, six days you do your work. But on the seventh day, do no work, so that your ox and your donkey may rest, 
And so that the slave born in your household and the foreigner living among you may be what? Okay, so let's kind of get in our mind what this principle is. The Sabbath, it's set apart. It's special. It's a happy occasion. It's a pause. And what else is supposed to happen here? We are to be what? Refreshed. Okay, picture yourself parched, dry, and thirsty and you have that wonderful glass of Coca-Cola or water or whatever it might be, Sprite, insert tea, whatever your favorite thing is, and you're like, ah, you're refreshed. It's amazing. How many of you have worked so hard that you're like parched and you feel like you can't go on, and then you take a drink of something, and it's like, you, I don't know how to describe it, but something comes over you and you feel like you can go take a Take on the biggest challenge after that. Just a simple time where you stop, you get refreshed, and then you have the power to go and do what you need to do. That is what God designed the Sabbath for. Now, let's talk for a minute who exactly was to benefit from the Sabbath. This is directed specifically to the people of Israel, but we can benefit from it as well. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 15 tells us, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand. What do you think it was like for the people of Israel under Egypt? It was harsh. It was terrible. Making bricks out in the hot sun. Imagine just working in mud and straw. All your life, you have people with whips trying to get you to to get your quota out. It was no way for them to live. Now, what happened uh, when Moses came to help deliver them? Things got better, right? No. How bad did they get? They had to almost like double their work. People were getting whipped, and they didn't even get the straw provided for them. So right before they were delivered, things were the worst that they possibly could be. Imagine working out in the hot sun, doing your very best, and there's no way that you can come up with a quota. Imagine what that would have been like, the pressure and no rest, work, 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 no pause whatsoever. So much so that they cried out to God, and God heard their cry. And listen what he provided for them. Let's go ahead and read this again. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, in light of the fact that you were slaves, in light of the fact that you were praying for a moment of pause, some kind of relief, therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. He's commanded you. Now, why did he have to command them? Because it's part of our nature that if we think we can provide more, we're going to do it. We're going to work harder because we don't know what's coming next. And so we're going to work, 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 work. There's something of trust in the Sabbath, isn't there? Right? You remember uh, when manna was coming from heaven uh, to the people of Israel when it first started? On that seventh day, they were not supposed to go out, but they went out anyway. Some of them did, didn't they? Because they didn't know if they would have enough. And so they went out, and what happened with the extra they got? Maggots basically got into it, okay? It got messed up. And so basically everybody ended up the same. So the one that did not go out, God provided for them. So here's a simple principle for us today. Sometimes we feel like that we cannot afford to take the rest. There's so many different things in our life. We can't pause, God. You you don't know how difficult it is. And I believe God is asking us, do you trust me? Do you trust me to take a moment to rest in my presence? Uh, Let's be honest. I wasn't planning on saying this, but there are times when I am going about the the ministry of the church, and I'm working hard, and I'm studying, and there's this voice in me that says, you don't have time to stop and pray. You don't have time to read your Bible. You need to get busy and do the work of the Lord. You know what that voice is? (laughs) That's not the voice of God. You know the amazing thing? Every time that I take time to stop, 
and listen, God provides much, much better than when I strive and I work and I struggle to get the right thing to do. And I have a hunch that it's the same for you. That often we live on, you know, things that we've got to do and God is waiting for us to pause, to trust Him, and then allow Him to bless the rest of our day. So how was the Sabbath celebrated? Well, it wasn't just one person. Uh, Basically, there were no chores, little traveling, mostly staying at home, enjoying food and fellowship with family and time with God. So just imagine what the opposite of this is. If you worked seven days, you were out in the field the entire day, you came home just in time to go to bed, what would you lack in your life? Just say a Joy, what else? Family, right? Hey, I, th- I thought I had a son a while back. Are you one of my sons? You know? And hey, is that you, Dad? <laughs> no, what did Sabbath do for them that gave them one day to reconnect as a family where they could stop, spend time together? So part of God's master plan was a day that people and families could share with one another. They could reconnect again. And again, even in that atmosphere of family, it was all also pointed towards God. He is the reason, He's the one that's given us this time together as a family. They would read from the Word of God. They would pray. They would take time. And so it was a sharing of family, a reconnecting with family, and a reconnecting with God as well. Now, Sabbath was a gift to the Israelites. It was not a burden. It was a gift from God. Now, we live in a culture that encourages and sometimes demands constant work and activity, doesn't it? It's always saying more. Uh, You never get to that point where you have enough money or you've provided enough so that you could retire one day and it's always driving you. More, more. You don't do enough for your kids, so you need to enroll them in five other sports programs. And you go, and you go, and you go, and you go. That's what our culture does. We become enslaved to schedules, to responsibility, and the need for more and better. How many of you have ever had a time in your life where you felt enslaved to your schedule? You didn't want to do it, but you had to do it. I I think all of us have been in that place in our life before. And the thing is, some of these things can be good things, but yet we are slaves to them. So how does this inability to stop affect us? Just stop and ask yourself the question. Those times when you're going from this to that to this to that, what happens in your life? Here's how I kind of think about it. There's just this much of you, and you just spread yourself so thin over many different things. Let me go ahead and put this slide up if it'll work. We're spread too thin, and that makes us less effective overall. I'm just being honest and transparent with you. When I try to take on too many things and too many projects, you know what happens? I fail at every single one of them, right? I I, I reach novice level of each one of those responsibilities. And what God really wants me to do is stop, pause, receive from him, and from that place of strength to do the thing that he has called me to do. And the same thing for you. You can become spread too thin and become less effective overall. Your relationships can suffer. Many of you are experiencing that right now in your life. You feel distant from family. It's because you don't have the time that you need to really connect with them. Maybe some of you experience physical problems. You you have stress. Maybe some of you are going through depression, uh, different issues. And and this is not true for everybody, but some of you, it's because you're so busy in the rat race that you haven't taken time to stop and to rest. And I think the thing, uh, you know, probably the end result here is some people experience burnout. That means you go so, so far, so hard, that your body says, that's it, I'm shutting down, and you get a mandatory Sabbath, right? You didn't want it, but you got it. 
So we can look at Sabbath as a curse, but it was really meant as a gift to bless Israel with. And the lesson of Sabbath is important for us, even if we are not Jewish. While we may not be held to the same level of observance, I believe it is very important for us to find a way to honor the Sabbath in our lives. For instance, uh, just to let you know that a Jewish person does not worship Sabbath on Sunday. Did you know that? What day do they honor Sabbath? Saturday, right? From Friday evening to Saturday evening. The reason why we set apart the day Sunday is because the day that the Lord was risen on, so from early church time, that's kind of the reason why we do what we do. But the purpose is we set apart a day unto the Lord. So important parts of the rest that we need, we need to stop. That means if we're working and working, that we have to stop that work, and we need to look. Remember, we are looking towards the Lord. Luke chapter 5 and verse 16 tells us that Jesus sets an example for us. It says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Now, again, Jesus took on flesh and was like us, but he's also fully God. And I think he was setting an example for us. That even though he did these miraculous things, he took time to receive from the Lord, to rest. And that was part of the prayer. Mark 3, 7, Jesus withdrew with his disciples. What do you see in that? It wasn't just time alone with him, but he also, it's okay to to take time with other believers, with family. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. Here's what I've found. The majority of my most powerful moments with God have been away from the crowd. I'll give you a... Uh, just this is just me. I, I may work differently from you, but I've had some powerful moments in prayer together at the altar, powerful moments with other people. But my best times with God are when all you aren't here. <laughs> Let's just be honest. When I am alone with God, no one else there, and I am communicating with God, those are powerful moments in my life. And we all need that. So What I'm saying is, do you need to come to church? Yes, very much so. But don't let that be your only time that you stop and rest. You need that rest with the Lord. In our world, you will need uh, to be intentional and practical to give yourself time to rest. So what you need to see is that there are forces that constantly want you on this treadmill. Okay, You have got to make a a purposeful step to get off the treadmill and say, I am going to set apart a time, uh, a time to rest and a time to receive from the Lord. So important parts, you stop, you're looking to God, and then you are receiving. Uh, How many of you had uh, phones that have died? Yes, batteries, they go. Same thing, we have batteries inside of us, not lithium, but we can only go so far. We might explode if we did. But But we need to recharge our batteries. We need a heavenly boost from the Lord. And sometimes that comes in increments. And I loved as I was looking at some of the the way God set up the Sabbath for the people of Israel. You know, daily we are called to go before the Lord. That's, That's a time of rest that we have with Him. And then we saw Sabbath happening once a week. So there's weekly, there's a little bit more time. So think about it like this. You know, daily you have this much time, but then this day that you set apart, you have more time. And then you saw uh, throughout Scripture, like seven weeks, then there was an extended time. Uh, Yearly, uh, there was a week that is set apart as a Sabbath. Every seven years, that seventh year was a longer period of time. And then seven times seven is what? What happens for the people of Israel then? The year of Jubilee. Again, another year set apart. Now, how could we learn from that? I think we need time alone with God every single day. Okay, You need that rest. God has mandated something inside of you that you can only stay awake for so long. Some of you are fighting that right now. No. <laughs> uh, your body will check out. It will go to sleep. That's one thing that God has set up. But you also need time alone with God. Okay? But then he set up this week where you set apart a day 
where you come before the Lord. I, I like Sunday where you, you take the time to be at church. It's you're resting, you're not going to work, but you are receiving from the Lord. And then how many of you take vacations? Like we you get two weeks of vacation, right, sometimes. And sometimes as you stay longer, uh, let's just for fun sake, anybody get uh, more than three or four weeks vacation because you stayed with the company? Do you mind sharing how much? Five weeks. Okay, so the longer you stay with your company, theoretically, the, the longer your vacation is. It kind of seems a little bit like this. The more time that you invest, you should have a longer period. And why do companies do that? They do it as a benefit, but they also realize that it's possible for their employees to burn out, right? And this time away helps them to come back and be powerful. And so I say for all of us, we need those times where we set apart. And as time goes by, we need extended times as well. Uh, there are many uh, pastor friends that I know of, you know, they've... they've worked uh, 10 years in ministry or they've, they've done this and their church will give them a month break. Basically, that idea of Sabbath where they rest, they don't do any ministry and they come back with power and are able to minister. Uh, here's a musical term. How many of you like enjoy music? Some of the songs that we sing, you'll hear us, you know, you're, you're strumming and then all of a sudden there's this pause and then it comes back with power. That's that rest. There's a power in a rest as you're, you're keeping beat. Here's your, your four time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you take your break, one, two, three. One, two, three. And what happens is there is a power. Once you take that break, it makes more emphasis on that next note that's coming. In the same way for us, when we take that time to break and to rest, we come back with power with that next thing that we're going to do. Now, as you rest, make sure that you also are listening. I love the story of Samuel. Uh, the Lord had spoken to him in the night two other times, and so he, he goes to Eli again. And Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Think about this. How many times has the Lord called you, Morris, Morris, and you didn't hear? Or Craig, Craig, and you didn't hear. Or Melanie, Melanie, and, and you didn't hear. What could cause that to happen? Distraction. We are so busy that we do not stop. How many times is God trying to give us the direction that we need? He's got something for us to do, but yet we never take time to stop and listen. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. So when you take that time to be alone with God, be listening to say, God, I want to hear from you. Take time. Say, Lord, speak to me because I'm, I'm listening. You know, it's hard to hear God in the hustle and the bustle. You have to take time to rest and to listen. Now, here's the part I was talking about with Deborah. Deborah, I didn't know you were going to be playing when I picked out the scripture to go here. In 2 Kings 3.15, uh, we see Elisha, when he wanted to hear from the Lord, Here's one thing that he did. He said, but now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha, and he said, this is what the Lord says. So, Deborah, I'm going to be needing you a lot lately, okay? <laughs> Soon enough. No, but I do personally, when I am praying, I'll have some music on in the background. And you know why that is? I don't know if this happens to you, but how many of you, when you have gone to stop and to pray, all of a sudden you begin thinking about, your son, or I've got that job at work to do, I've got this to do. And it's like you pause, but your mind hasn't paused, right? It's thinking about that next thing that you've gotten to do. Your body is off the treadmill, but your mind is still on the treadmill working. And I, it was kind of crazy, but you know what I'm saying. But here, sometimes music will help you kind of refocus yourself on the Lord. That, that works for me, may not for you. When you take time to rest, Listen 
and you will put yourself in a place to be led. Luke 4, 1, we see the example of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Let me give you another example. Acts 13, 2, while they were worshiping the Lord, as they were setting apart a time to rest before the Lord, to praise the Lord, and as they were fasting, and fasting, they're listening for the Lord. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Because they stopped and they listened, they received direction. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So I want to ask you a question. Do you feel like you are being led by God? Or or maybe you're in a time in your life where you're kind of, where is your direction, God? What are, what are you having for me to do? I, I feel like I'm floundering. Maybe you're in this spot where you feel like you're not being led. If that's you, you might want to start listening. Amen? In order to listen, in order to hear, you must take time to rest. That means you turn off the world and be refreshed by tuning in to God. Melanie, would you mind coming Here's one thing I want you to remember today. In order to be led, you must first listen. And the ability to listen comes after you take the time to stop and to rest. Would you stand with me? And here's the point where I awkwardly stare into your eyes. What's your life like right now? Are you on that rat race? Are you busy? Or have you set apart a time to be with the Lord? I mean, I hope that Sunday is a day where you can set that apart, where you come to church, learn from God. In the afternoon, maybe you you relax a little bit. You spend time with family. I hope that that is happening in your life. Maybe you're in a situation where your job, you know, causes you to work if, on Sunday. If that's your case, please pray because we need you here, right? But if that's the case, I encourage you, still set apart a time to rest and receive from the Lord. It is very, very important. Some of you right now with your your family, once you do stock, uh, do you feel distant? Are you getting enough time with your family? If you're not, take time aside. Guard that time. It's possible to have a a Sabbath and, and not really have a Sabbath. It's impossible, it's possible to have this period of rest, but if you're all on your phones or if you're all doing something else, you're not getting that time to connect as a family. I'm saying you need it for your relationships, you need it for your physical body, and you need it for your relationship with the Lord. A time to stop and rest. Would you bow your heads? Lord, we thank you for the gift of Sabbath for this example that was set for us and Lord you made us you know how our body works and I know in a message like this we're all kind of taking stock and maybe some here are saying uh, but but Lord you don't know what my schedule is like you don't I don't know how I'm going to do this so Lord I pray for those people right now that they would trust you that they you know I know the scripture says not to put you to that test but Lord your words are faithful And if we'll take time to set apart for you, I know that you will bless that time and that you'll give us the strength we need for everything else. And so, Lord, I'm not uh, giving the words for a person to do, but Holy Spirit, I, I pray that right now you would begin to speak to people practically what they can do to set apart time for you, for family, and just to receive the rest that they need. And I want you to stop right now. I'm going to stop talking in a minute. And I want you to ask God, what is it that you want me to do? Just be willing to be obedient. I'm going to invite anybody that wants to to 
come down to this altar just as a place of commitment. You know, in my mind's eye, what I see is maybe a husband or wife looking at each other and say, yeah, we, we need this in our family right now. And taking a step as a family or, or a couple or, you know, even, you know, you're single and your life is just kind of going crazy and you realize you need today to make that decision. I'm going to stop and take time to be with God. Stop and take time to be with friends. Encourage me in the Lord. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you right now, would you take a step of faith as in commitment to Him? And just come down to this altar and just make this commitment to Him. Remember, it's not just stopping, but there's action involved to keep the Sabbath. That means that we set it apart. We do what we can to make it different than any other day. So whatever the Lord's speaking to you, would you just respond to Him right now?
say the Lord today is offering you the opportunity that you don't have to be like the Israelites in Egypt, working, 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 working. That he's provided an opportunity for you to rest. And so really it comes down to one thing. Will you take advantage of this day that he has given you? Will you set apart a time that's special? And really, what we're doing is we're praying that God would help us to view the day as special as well. So Lord, we do that. Lord, would you change our view? Uh, Lord, we are growing every single day, and this is the area that you've asked us to grow into today. And so, Lord, may it not be momentary, but Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that you would give us one action point, something that we can do this week that would say, God, we want to set apart time for family, for rest, and most importantly, we want to set apart time for you. And during that time, we're going to open our ears because we want to hear from you, God. We can say a lot to you, but Lord, we want to stop to listen why? Because we want to be led by you. There's a great need. There's a world that's in need. And I, I firmly believe that if we would be listening and that we would respond to the leading of God, we would do great and mighty things for him. So, Lord, I pray that for us. Lord, help us to rest, help us to listen, and help us to be led by you. One other thing I want to just pray you know, for you and over you. I just want to say that you know, every time we worship the Lord, that's an opportunity to do all of those things. To rest in His presence, to hear His voice, and to be led by Him. I don't know, the, the passion inside me is really, really strong when it comes to, to this one area of worship, and it's, for me, that's the one of the, the greatest times when I, when I hear from God, when I sense His presence, and I can be led by Him. So I just want to encourage you. I know I've already done it, and I, I can see you guys are growing in your worship and your love for the Lord. I just want to encourage you even more so. View this time when we worship the Lord as a meeting time. I'm coming to, to meet with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are the leader of this church. Holy Spirit, uh, that you are moving inside of our hearts. And Lord, I pray for every commitment that was made today. Lord, that you would help each one of us fulfill that. And Lord, that we would not view this as a burden, but that we would view it as a gift from you. And Lord, when we stop and take the time to hear you and to be led, to spend time with family, Lord, may we do it with thankfulness. Lord, even that the day that we wake up and say, God, thank you for this day that I can stop and I can be with you and be with family and friends. Lord, just fill us with thanksgiving for what you have given us. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.